back for our purpose. Does the gentleman from all from Rhode Island, Mr. Cicilline, seek recognition? Mr. Chairman, I move to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Chairman Nadler, uh, for bringing this important bill for markup today, and thank you to Congresswoman McBath for introducing this vital legislation. I remain in awe of your courage. It is maddening how frequently we hear that a shooter displayed warning signs of violence prior to a shooting and that no one acted. In the face of so many red flags, can we blame people for asking, why didn't anyone do anything? Unfortunately, the answer too often is because in too many states, there is nothing that can be done, no matter how troubling someone's behavior may be. On average, firearms are used in 64 deaths by suicide per day. 56% of mass shooters from 2009 to 2020 showed warning signs that they posed a risk of violence. The shooter at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School showed exactly these kinds of warning signs before he killed 17 high school students and staff. In fact, before the shooting, he'd been the subject of dozens of 911 calls and tips to the FBI, had posted content related to self-harm on social media, and his own mother reported his violent behavior over and over again to law enforcement. But despite all these reports, there was no way to stop him from possessing the automatic weapon that was used to kill 17 innocent people. Simply put, this bill allows a federal judge to temporarily keep a person at extreme risk of committing violence from possessing a firearm. The claims by my colleagues on the other side of the aisle that there's no due process is completely false. This bill sets forth detailed process, requiring notice and a hearing, swiftly an opportunity for the uh, individual deprived of the firearm to swiftly contest it and strikes a balance between the Second Amendment right and the right of the public and other Americans to be free of the ravages of gun violence. People have a right to live in their communities safe and free from gun violence. That is a constitutional right of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So this notion that we should not have the ability in any way to limit violent and dangerous people who have exhibited tendencies to show they are dangerous themselves or others, that we simply have no choice but to allow them to access firearms and live with the consequences is ridiculous. It's wrong, it's constitutionally unsupportable, and the process in this bill sets forth exactly the right balance. Currently, 19 states in the District of Columbia have similar laws. In my home state of Rhode Island, we adopted such a law in 2018. It has been invoked 76 times between 2018 and 2020, and is known to have prevented multiple suicides. I'm tired of asking when it's too late. Why didn't somebody do something? We have the ability to do something. Today, we are doing something. And we would not be here today without the thoughtful, consistent, and deeply committed leadership of Lucy McBath. And I want to thank Congresswoman McBath for this critical, common sense legislation that will save lives and will help us fight the epidemic of preventable gun violence. I'm proud to be a co-sponsor, and I urge my colleagues to support this. And in my final couple of minutes, I just want to suggest to my Republican friends on the other side of the aisle, this hearing is not about the refusal to support the police exhibited by so many Republicans in refusing to support the American Rescue Plan and refusing to address the violence against law enforcement that happened on January 6th and recharacterize it. That's not what it's about. It's not about the efforts to stem violence against educators, teachers, and school administrators and school boards. And it's not even about Attorney General Garland's explicit testimony under oath that of course the department recognizes the First Amendment rights of everyone and that parents aren't domestic terrorists, but that the FBI has a responsibility to keep communities safe. And so despite what will be an ongoing effort to mischaracterize what this hearing is about and to make claims that are unsupported by evidence, uh, this is about a very common sense proposal to protect people from the ravages of gun violence when people have exhibited dangerous behaviors that indicate by clear and convincing evidence that that person is a danger to themselves or others. If we can't construct a piece of legislation that allows in those instances to temporarily remove that firearm with an opportunity for that individual to make their case to the contrary, then we simply are gonna say there's nothing we can do. We have to live with the consequences of seriously mentally ill and dangerous people getting firearms, killing themselves, and killing innocent people. That is not a conclusion I'm prepared to accept. And so I with end again by urging all of my colleagues to support this excellent piece you. of legislation. And, and again, want to say thank you to Congresswoman McBath for her extraordinary leadership, for taking a very painful, unspeakably painful, 
personal experience, the loss of her son, and transforming it into action that will help millions of people be protected from the same kind of tragedy. And I thank you, and I yield back, Mr. Chairman.